Okay, welcome back to Animation Teacher. This week, we're going to actually start on the fun stuff. We're going to be animating poses uh, using a, a character rig. So this is the updated uh, Franco rig that I started building last year. Um, I haven't <clears throat> I haven't created all the leg positions, but uh, he does rotate into three positions now. So we have the front view, uh, three-quarter front, and profile. So the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to create a project uh, folder here. I'll save it on the desktop. Um, and I'll call it Franco Animation. And you guys can grab this file off of the shared uh, once it's created. So in this week's assignment, we'll be doing pose-to-pose -pose animation utilizing uh, any or all of these angles. So uh, all you have to do in this assignment is create four poses. I'll just create uh, two. You're going to create a sketch layer first. What I like to do is I actually uh, like to outline the first position. Um, in this case, it's the resting position. I'm going to just use any color here. You can even create a sketch color if you wanted. Okay. So what I like to do is I like to create a starting position. Actually, you know what? Why don't we go wide here? Yeah. So let's shrink him a little bit. I'm just going to use my transform tool here. I'm just going to bring him to about that size. So we have a full screen body uh, animation. All right, so I'll click his sketch symbol that I created and I'll bring down the brush size and I'll just rough out more or less the outline of his resting position So when you guys are doing this for your assignment, I'd like it if your resting position was one of your poses, not this default. So your resting position could be something like arms on his hips, or uh, lying down or sitting down. OK, so this is our sketch sketch position. Next I'm going to do another drawing and I'll turn on my onion skin. So today we're going to keep things simple. Today we're just going to maybe have him uh, do a sidestep as his uh, second uh, position or second pose. So I'm just going to do Ah, I have an idea. Okay. I'm going to have him reach up to a cookie jar. So his second pose. Would be like this. I'm probably going to have to draw a hand there. And I'll draw another hand here. Might have to adjust his foot position. Okay. Okay, so this will be my animation. He's just going to go from this pose to this pose. You don't want to spend too much time uh, 
finessing the sketch. Uh, you just want to get an idea. Then you can kind of push it a little bit further. But basically all you're looking for in your sketch is a uh, line direction and a nice silhouette. So this is our line direction. We start off here and we're going to push it over there. Okay. And a nice silhouette. So I'll probably push this arm out a little bit more. Okay, so let's turn on our rig. So to get started, what I like to do is I like to keep these three frames. Oops. I like to keep these three frames and not really mess around with it. So what I'll do to copy this three quarter front pose, I'll move it to frame 10 while clicking and dragging, and then I'll hold down control. That'll take me to frame 10. And I'm going to do the same with my sketch. I'm going to click and drag and I'll get my sketch. And then this way I can start posing. So I'll take my second sketch and put, put it here. Turn on my animate button. I'm going to hit F6 a bunch of times because I like to prevent uh, any keys from not getting keyed or any uh, symbols from not getting keyed. So here we go. We're just going to start posing him out. What I like to do is I like to, uh, for a pose like this, I'll actually start with the base of the feet. So in this case, I'm going to move his entire bottom first. and then I'll compensate. I'll move his upper body. Now you want to make sure that your pose is going to be balanced. You don't want him to look like he's falling over. So in this case, oops, in this case I actually have his I actually has, have his feet kind of break the floor plane there um, at the moment. That's fine. I'm going to adjust the art of the feet. I'm just going to move his arms out here to be the counterbalance. I'll do the same with the leg. So you want to just ensure that there's enough counterbalance to whatever it is you're doing. Now I drew a few instances of shoulders that you can use. I'll show you how to adjust the art if you don't quite see what you need. Okay, at this point, I'm going to turn off the sketch here because I don't really need to see it. Okay, now what I like to do sometimes if, um, uh, if you aren't going to need to draw so much, you can actually skew symbols. For now, uh, for example, here I'll just show you real quick. I won't. I'll actually draw a hand, but you can actually just skew the symbol if you want to stretch something like that. Actually, that works quite nice. If you can't get the skew that you want, you'll just have to draw it in. But before you draw it in, uh, make sure you um, parent up to the peg and hit R. That'll reset it to its native position and you'll be able to draw it cleanly. I'm just going to put that back to the skew position because I actually kind of like that. <coughs> if you scroll with the bracket buttons, you'll see in the drawing substitutions all the drawings that I've placed in. Again, if you don't see anything you like, just draw it in. Okay, so for example here, I want my line on the shoulder to be straight. I kind of like the shape of this, but it's not quite there. So what I'll do is I'm going to hit Alt-Shift-D. 
you can also press this button here and it'll duplicate the drawing and you'll see that it's a new drawing here once I have that um, I'm going to actually first check to see if they're all on the same line art or on the same layers so I see that I have an overlay and a line art layer when you do a new drawing substitution you have to make sure you um, draw with both now this rig is set up so that we see the line art as the underlay and the um, overlay as the overlay art and I'll show you what that looks like in the node view here so there's the overlay and the underlay is here okay so here's the underlay it shows everything and the overlay will only show the overlay art layer okay so that's the underlay and that's the overlay so because this is a new drawing substitution I'm gonna have to create a new overlay um, you can basically delete the overlay first and we're just gonna select the line art and we'll adjust the line art here on the camera view I like to use this tool here it's like a kind of free transform tool to play around with my art pieces you can also draw new art pieces from scratch if you'd like if you're not quite comfortable drawing or creating new artwork at this point uh, just use what I've provided I'll try to build the library more as we go along okay so let's say you wanted that we'll go to drawing view here I'm going to copy and I'll paste and then what we'll do here is I'm actually gonna just erase a bit of this to ensure that we have a proper overlay and underlay piece of art so basically what that'll do whoops, let me show you the both here what that does is it allows us the flexibility of having an overlay and an underlay the one thing that I have to do still is I have to convert all this to a fill and flatten it like so so then that way when I move my elbow oops sorry I missed the step let's do that again you actually have to do that first so I'm gonna copy this I'll show you again how to do this so paste on the overlay layer and then from this point we're going to actually remove this fill here you can see the fill go between the line we'll get to this on a later lesson but basically the fill currently goes between the line here because it's a line fill so what we have to do is convert all that flatten it and then fill it so let me just steal the color here so now if you select it the fill goes to the outer line not to the center okay so that will allow us to actually utilize our uh, overlay and underlay fill so the trick here is you gotta make sure you clean it up properly and again if you're not comfortable with this um, you, you can avoid drawing new uh, arms for now but basically that's how it's done so then you get like a nice round uh, shoulder and overlay underlay elbow there okay 
So there's our pose. I'm actually just going to change this a little. So it's a little bit more balanced. And I'm going to actually adjust the artwork for the shirt. So once again, I have this selected. And I'm going to hit uh, Alt-Shift-D. And that'll give me a new instance. Now this one actually has a lot of layers um, as well. So it's got the overlay layer and an underlay layer. Okay. So another way you can move both layers at the same time is to use this tool here. It's called Apply Line and Color Art. So basically you're selecting the overlay and the line art at the same time. Now provided they were created similarly, uh, they can move like this. Otherwise, it's not going to work. It has to be created similarly. Okay. And I'm just going to adjust this to give us a little bit of a nicer curve. All right. So there we have it. It's a little bit of a better silhouette. And the last thing that you can do with uh, this Franco build is you can add some face planning. So if you just grab the hair, you can actually just move it up. Just make sure that you have uh, the hair selected on the peg. And then you can move up his features as well. And then just be sure you adjust anything necessary. So in this case, I'll just skew it a little bit. Move the chin up. And I'll move out the hair. And I'll move down this. Okay, so what you want to do is you want to make sure your multiplane is uh, fairly subtle. Now, at this point, this hair is probably going to shoot in the back, so we can just throw that in the back. Now we have our two poses. So once you have your two poses, well, uh, I'll show you what we have to do. It's basically the antic overshoot settle that we talked about last week. Actually, let me adjust this foot first. Let's duplicate this. Control Shift D. And I'm going to affect all layers. And I'm just going to bend his foot. Okay, so after I have the art done, uh, I'm going to have to adjust looks like he actually pivots quite a bit, so I'm going to have to reposition his whole lower leg there to make sure that works. And his upper body, 
make sure that works. Okay. There we go. Okay, so once you have the poses, what we're going to do is we're going to start timing this out. So like always, I like to have a hold for a little bit before I get into my action. Oh, there's a tween happening here. So when there's a lot of elements inside your build and you drop down your uh, your menu here, at some point you're going to see a tween happen. So I think it's happening there on the neck. Now you won't see that if you have everything collapse. But instead of looking for all those keys and trying to find out where it is, all you have to do is key everything, control K and control L. And now all the tweens are gone. So it's kind of just the toggle on and off. Okay, so we're going to get from this pose to this pose. The first thing we want to do is introduce an antic. So if we're going uh, to screen left, in our uh, direction, our antic would be screen right. So simply create an antic. Perhaps we lean them down a little bit or back. He's probably going to bend his uh, knees. Now there's a there was a issue with this uh, rig earlier that I thought I'd fix, so I'll fix it right now and you guys can have this build. I'm going to make his shoe completely independent from uh, his leg, so then that way you can uh, keep his foot planted. So what we're going to do is I'm going to actually detach the shoe here and connect it to his body master. Okay, and we'll have to adjust the starting position for his shoe here. But I'll do that for you here. Alright, so I'm going to give this shoe a peg here. And this is a little uh, rigging lesson here. So for shoe underlays, I like to, uh, first you got to make sure your layers are, your pegs are set to separate. I like to make sure that the local settings you can click here to set local settings set to 001B and that just shoots it back into space so then that way the foot's always behind the leg there now I'm gonna basically find that key in my network or in my timeline copy and paste that just to make sure the foot's the same there and then the other thing I'll do is uh, I'll adjust the other f uh, shoe as well. Connect that to the body master. And because this is always going to be uh, the front shoe, I have to make sure it's layered properly in front of the other shoe. Like so. So that should uh, affect the other key. That's fine. So what I'll do is I'm going to collapse this entirely now. And just double check to see if that worked. Okay, so the shoe I have to bring back up here. And this shoe I have to adjust. For this leg I have to adjust. There we go. Okay, so now we have our 
adjusted uh, pose here. So I'm gonna stretch his leg a little bit here. We're gonna go from this to that pose. So this, sorry, this was the antic. I'm gonna bend his knees now. That's going to lean him back. You can even lift his foot up here if you'd like. So there's this crotch line that you actually have to grab the line itself. And this is the antic. So this is going to be a combo of uh, antic and a lead-in. Okay. So there's the antic. It's very subtle. And then that's the overshoot settle. So for the overshoot settle, we want it to actually be I'm going to move this back here. Uh, we want it to be about four frames difference. So here's our here's our uh, hold position. I'm going to do an antic into frame 20. And then I'm going to shoot out to my overshoot on frame 24 and settle on frame 28, or, uh, 29, let's say. So for my overshoot, basically all I'm going to do is I'm going to push this pose a little bit further. And that is done by basically stretching just a touch. all the features so let's go push that out just a bit it's kind of like a hyper extended pose that kind of settles back into place Okay, so just stretch it ever so slightly more. Like that. And then it settles into place. Okay, so we have our hold, antic, overshoot, settle. Now I'm going to just tween all that by selecting the keys and hitting F or Control K. So let me show you what that looks like uh, without any eases, okay? Now, if you want to preview just a certain area and you don't want to see like the rotation at the start, uh, simply go to your start position, which is here, and hit start. And then your stop position, I guess here, and hit stop. So that's just going to add these brackets there, and it'll pl I'll loop it, and then it'll just play that in loop. Okay, so that is essentially what we want to do. It's the antic, overshoot, and settle. Now I want to show you the onion skin for this. So currently it's very even all the way across. So what I'll show you is how to utilize your uh, set ease to multiple parameters. That's on the timeline view here. 
So the first thing I want to do is uh, show you uh, this center position, which is on frame 60. And this is our start position. Nothing happens prior to this. So from this position, we want to get into our antic position, which is here. Now, whenever you get into an antic, you want to ease into it um, really quickly and slow down right at the end. So I'm going to hit 80. And then you can see here it slows into the uh, antic position. Now, I like to get out of the antic a little bit slowly. So I'm going to add uh, 30 here and hit apply. And then you'll see that it favors the starting position. Uh, maybe, maybe 40 is better. You'll see much of a difference. And then we'll go to our next position. So in this position here, we actually want to get to this position pretty quickly. So I'm going to hit uh, 60, and it'll basically shoot really quickly to that position. And then on the settle, we actually want the ease to happen right at the end. So I'm going to go to the last frame and hit 80, uh, 70. Hit apply. All right, so we'll close that. And then you can see the eases happen there. Okay, so when we get to this, it eases quickly into this antic position, and he slowly gets out, and then boom, he speeds up right up to the top, and then he settles. So let's turn this onion skin off and see what that looks like. Okay, so that's the action there. Now you'll see some areas where it pops, the shoulders and the feet. So this is where uh, we start breaking our um, tweens. So to break your tweens, you basically locate where it pops. So in this case, you can see that the hand pops because this there's a instance change here. It goes from instance one, or sorry, instance CL close underscore one to instance one. So whenever you have that, what you want to do is locate that by hitting O, clicking the arm and hitting O to locate it on the timeline. The next thing you're going to do is you're going to find where uh, that pop happened. So it's right here. So what I'll do is I'll actually remove the tweens by clicking that and hitting Control L. And then I'm just going to go frame by frame and adjust this accordingly. So this is the biggest movement here. So usually where the biggest movement happens is where you want to actually change your instance. So as you can see, I'm going frame by frame here and adjusting accordingly. OK. So that's basically it there. Um, just going to move this arm back out a little bit so the shoulders stay connected. I also see here that uh, this shoulder is going through that shirt and it switches. So I'm going to locate that again. So I parent up to find the peg. So here's where that happens. So once again, I'm going to hit Control L to deactivate the tween. And find out where that happens. So in this case, uh, it goes from instance 1 to instance 2. So the biggest movement happens here. So I'm going to switch to instance 2 here. And the rest solves itself. Okay. Now the other thing that you'll know notice is uh, you see a little bit of his arm in the back there. So that has to do with the art that we created on the shirt. So it actually pops there. So what I'll do is, this is such a big movement here, I'm actually going to move the shirt instance there. And then that'll hide the shoulder connection. So you want to go frame by frame and try to scrutinize where stuff breaks. And then you'll catch all your mistakes.
So another one here, where it pops, goes from there to there. Uh, so it goes from frame 2, or drawing substitution 2, to drawing substitution 7. So I feel like that's a big movement there, from here to here. That's pretty big, so I'm going to actually move that to drawing substitution 7. And the other thing that I have to do is locate where it is here. Remove the tween, and then we'll go frame by frame. So, it's a little bit of doctoring here, because you want to make sure you get that nice transition that happens. So I'm just trying to find uh, the point where we can happily transition the pivot. So it looks like he's purposely bending his foot there. OK. So let's have a look at this again. There we go. So we have our standing position. Again, you, sh you guys should do a, a different pose for the standing position. It could be arms on hips, or uh, sitting down, or leaning, or uh, getting ready for a jumping jack. Uh, just something other than the stock pose here. So from that staying, standing position, or resting pose, we're going to go to our antic. You're going to ease in to your antic quickly, and then you slow down on your antic. Then you're going to exit slowly, or you can even hold uh, with no movement. And then you're going to quickly get into your overshoot, with an ease in of uh, 80 or 60 or 70, and then you're gonna quickly ease out of that, and then ease in to the last position. So you can put 70 or 80 on the last key, easing in. That pretty much does it. Uh, so that's one uh, action there. Um, if you can do this pose, antic, overshoot, and settle into the next pose, uh, that'll uh, take you from pose 1, pose 2, pose 3. So you need to transition from uh, pose 1 all the way to pose 4. Uh, and that's basically the assignment there. Make sure when you're on pose 4 that you properly overshoot and settle into a stop. Um, that's basically it. I'm going to save this file for your reference. And for those of you who uh, aren't part of my class and you want this uh, sample reference, just uh, hit me up via email and I'll um, give it to you. So that does it for me. Thanks for watching Animation Teacher, and I'll see you next time. Bye.